this is Dominic, wedding DJ. And this is Serena, wedding planner. And together we are the, the wedding, wedding duo. duo. We are here to talk all things weddings. Planning a wedding can be stressful, but we are here to help. So before you say, that's it, we're going to Vegas, don't go to Vegas. Let's have some fun. Join us as we answer your wedding questions and help navigate planning one of the biggest days of your life with The, the Wedding, wedding Duo. Duo. Hello and welcome back to the podcast that we know so fondly as The Wedding Duo. Yes, it's us. We're back. We're sorry. We've taken another break so early on in our podcast journey, but... Did you like my intro? I was going for more of an eloquent. Yeah, it was lovely. Was very, nice, very yeah. nice. Trying something new. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> um, but we did. We, we've taken a little break because life, right? Life oh. happens. But we love recording our podcast and we're back to record episode 12. Well, we were in New York for a wedding. That's one thing. We were. If you're watching on YouTube, you, you'll notice the hat, my New York hat. The merch, the New York merch. Yeah, so we did. We traveled to New York and it was actually not in New York City, but where were we? We were on the Hudson just right where, I don't know, we're about an hour out of the city, um, right where Jersey and New York meet right there on the Hudson <laughs> up on the corner there. <laughs> That's it was a, beautiful. It was very yeah. green and it was lovely and we had a wonderful time. It was so fun. It was a good time. We brought the whole family up. We saw the Lion King. We acted like fools in... Times Time Square. Square. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you saw some of our TikToks, we were definitely yeah. And somebody made a comment. I keep in. telling this story because it was funny. But uh, I was doing a silly dance that my daughter said, "Oh, we should do this in Times Square." And I go, "Yes, we will." So we did a TikTok, and I was dancing like a dork, which is not, not, unlike, not him. unlike him. But somebody mm -hmm. was like, "Look, no one's even looking at you," and I kept saying, "Have you been to Times Square?" Like my silly antics didn't even register on the scale of lunacy <laughs> for Times Square. So true. First, because I was fully dressed. Uh, secondly, I wasn't dressed like Elmo or Transformer or mm -hmm. Spider-Man. We saw a lot of Spider-Man, a couple we of did. Iron Mans. So the kids were impressed and mm -hmm. they had three favorite questions for us. One was, what did he just say or she just say? Because <laughs> their, their vocabulary <laughs> expanded a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they learned a lot of new words. Mm -hmm. And then um, we got a lot of, are we uh, there yet? Are we just... there yet? Because we walked and we used the subway for the first time. That was mm -hmm. a lot of fun and scary. Um, but also the biggest one was what? was that smell and the hardest one to answer it was the hardest one to answer there's a combination of, of weed and urine was often <laughs> the smells but there were times i'm like i really don't know what that that rancid smell is that yeah. we smell. but it wasn't bad i mean the city is not i mean it's a big city and you're always going to run into that but stuff but i didn't feel particularly unsafe at any time it was no. like and as a dad i'm usually Got my head on a swivel, but we had a great time. It was a good time. It was a good time. So you're not here for that, yeah, even though, about that. yeah, <laughs> nobody cares about our New York trip. But what you probably do care about, and why you're probably here, is because you may be planning a wedding, or you may be the mother of the bride, or the auntie, auntie, or you know, maid of honor, somebody else who's trying to help with the wedding planning. And if you didn't already know, we are the wedding duo. I am a wedding planner here in San Antonio, Texas. Dominic, my husband, sitting to the right of me <laughs> is a... <laughs> Just think about that one. I'm I a wedding DJ. Yeah. Uh, and the other person that may get something out of this is if you are a aspire, an aspiring DJ or an aspiring Absolutely. wedding planner, or you already are a wedding planner, you may find a few tips in here and be like, oh, that's a good idea. That's something I may incorporate into my day of planning or pre-day planning or whatever. Yeah. So today's topic came from a request that we got off of one of our TikTok videos. Um, one of our followers asked, can you do a podcast episode on what you do as a wedding planner if we can't afford a wedding planner? So say, for example, your mom or your aunt or your cousin or a friend is helping you with wedding planning uh, because um, you're not having a professional, right? Yeah, it's not in everybody's budget to have professionals wall to wall. Exactly. And so I'm going to kind of help you by going through my day, right? Like as I get there in the morning through the end of the evening and talk a little bit about what we do behind the scenes as your vendors to make the day go well, right? Yeah. And I hear this a lot where they're like, why would the DJ be doing whatever? But there's a lot of times where I don't have a planner, first mm -hmm. of all. And we did this about, I did this about 10 years in California before we hit Texas. And back then, unless people were really bougie or they had a lot of that more budget, they, there was not very many planners. So I ran 
hundreds of events long before I ever got to Texas. And a lot of places here require you to have a planner because mm-hmm. the owners finally were like, the heck with this. We're not going to be doing all of this yeah. stuff because it's a big Somebody ask. Somebody has lot. to do it. And they want to be able to detach a little bit, turn on the lights, set the air conditioning, and then go home and let somebody else run the event. Because sometimes mm-hmm. there are venue owners out there that still are really involved and and still here too. But sometimes it's nice. They don't. They didn't sign on for all that. So, So anyway, there's plenty of vendors out there that they show up and maybe they're the only professional, whether it's your photographer. I know they sometimes have done timelines and ran the event. I know the DJs have. Mm-hmm. But the planner... Absolutely. That's right what you're there for. Absolutely. Yes. So to start it off, like when I arrive, right, and we're going to kind of pretend like obviously all that other stuff has already happened. We've created a timeline. We've talked to everybody. We've given them their arrival. We've, you know, um, done our check-ins with all the vendors so that we know everybody knows when to get there and kind of what's happening for the day, right? This is go time. This This is is go time. This is go time. So when I arrive, One of the first things I do is take a look at my reception space, right? Because I've usually done some type of floor plan or worked with a venue on a floor plan. And I want to make sure that what I had on paper, right, what we discussed is exactly what I see when I walk in the room. And the reason this is really important to do early in the day is because it takes a lot to move tables and chairs, right? And once you've dropped those linens, once the linens are on the table, and then once you've put decor on the table, it's even, uh, I mean, it's an undertaking, if not impossible, right? People um, have asked me before, like, can we move this table? And I go, the glassware is already up. Yes. Like, you're moving the table, not to mention sometimes the centerpieces can be elaborate. I yeah. mean, if there's a big floral arrangement on there, that table is not, I mean, it just makes me nervous. We're going to shatter something. Exactly. And so it's just not meant to move once you have it where you want it to be. So that's one of the first things I do. You know, linens have to go down first before anything else. And so I'm looking around, do we have the right number of tables? And then of course, do we have the right number of chairs at each table? So if you've done assigned seating, you're gonna, we're gonna wanna do a count of, okay, there's nine chairs at table 10. There's 10 chairs at table 11. You know, so we make sure that that matches the seating chart. And even if you haven't done assigned seating, right? If you're doing open seating and maybe just some reserved tables for immediate family and bridal party, um, I still wanna make sure I have enough chairs for everybody, right? Because you don't wanna run into the, uh, nobody has a place to sit, sit and eat when that time comes. Well, when do they, when were the tables and chairs usually set up? A lot of times it'll happen the night before. The night before, because yeah. the staff that's there, one reason why when your event is done, the staff, a lot of venues are trying to get people out because they got to clean up, first of all, mm-hmm. then they got to strike and set up for the next day. So if they were tired, it's 2 a.m. and there's uh, a few teenagers running around setting up chairs, they may not realize they're supposed to be 10 at a table. They're doing eight at a table because that, that sometimes that's very they do common, that. It's pretty right? common to do eight or 10. Um, but yeah, to your point, you may have a table with nine. Or everyone else is eight, but yeah. Yeah. And the thought that. there That's not is something I've ever done. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the thought there is if we've ordered, for example, place settings or chargers for each seat, I can't necessarily just say, oh, it's okay. I have an extra chair at that table. No, it will look really weird because they won't have a charger. They won't have a place setting, right? It has to match what we've planned on because that's what we've ordered for. Tell people what a charger is if they don't know. So a charger is that pretty platter. It looks like a plate, but it's larger. And it goes under the plate that you eat off of, right? So it's, a lot of times they're gold or silver or, you know, they're just more decorative than anything. They are. And a lot of times Uncle Charlie like grabbed that going and like, this is a fantastic plate. And they're headed to the buffet. I go, no, 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 that's not your. That's not for That's eating. not your plate. The plates are at the buffet. Yes. That, but I mean, it's, it's I make that announcement sometimes because it's a, it's a, a wedding tends to be a pretty fancy event oftentimes, and people don't go to these things all the time. And there you go. They may the not know. They it's may a, not it's know. It's a thing, charger. That is. It absolutely is. So the next thing I'm going to do um, is check in with whoever's on site, right? So, um, you know, if the bride and groom are getting ready there in the bridal suite, in the groom's quarters, we're going to make sure that they have everything they need. Um, to be relaxed and have a good time, right? So we're going to check in with them. Usually hair and makeup um, is on site. Sometimes they get there before I do um, because you can start hair and makeup at 6.30 a.m., right? And I don't necessarily have to be there to start the hair and makeup, but I'm usually there relatively early. And so, um, you know, making sure that my couples, that my brides have a comfortable spot to hang out with their people is so important 
for the enjoyment of that part of the day, right? Absolutely. And I don't start my hair that early usually, but <laughs> this just doesn't happen. These eyebrows. If you didn't know, if you listen to our podcast. I have beautiful flowing hair. He's bald. No, they don't know. <laughs> the people listening think I've got this luxurious, it like blows in the wind. Not There's quite. Like introductions. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me in the back? Is that what happens? Maybe like in your in dreams? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that's part of it. I had hair once. Yeah. Um, you know, so another big point for, you know, what I'm doing beforehand, obviously, is um, always checking my timeline and the timing, right? So we talked a little bit about like we've done the timeline and we've checked in with the vendors beforehand, but I'm always putting like a reminder on my phone um, and you gave me this tip to set it off when vendors are supposed to arrive, right? So if my phone goes off and that person is not there, I've usually already made a phone call, you know, the week prior, but I'm going to want to start, you know, looking at my watch and say, okay, I'm going to give them 10 more minutes. Maybe there was traffic, right? But you've got to get ahead of these things. You can't just wait and assume that they're going to show up, right? Well, who's that? You mentioned hair and makeup is usually there early and it's right. Cause if they're late, oh my gosh, you set back the photographer, you set back. Mm -hmm getting ready, getting in the dress, all that stuff. Cause you may want to get a bunch of those pictures done before, but yeah, who's the next one? Like give an order of like who usually like what vendors yeah. usually show up. Yeah. So you're going to have any type of decor or floral that comes in, depending on the extent yeah, of your decorations. Yeah. Um, sometimes people will come and even set up things that don't get used till later, like photo booth uh, rentals. They'll come early just because that's how they do yeah. their schedule. They may have multiple places they're dropping off to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but then, of course, you've got your catering. They'll come a little closer to ceremony time because obviously dinner doesn't start hors d'oeuvres and dinner don't start till after. Um, you've got your bar set up. You've got photography and videography. They usually come midday, um, depending. Again, this all depends on when you're starting your ceremony and how long you've contracted these people. But this is just a general idea. Yeah. And even if you have friends and family picking up a lot of these slack. Mm hmm um, the photographers, if you have a friend that's a photographer, which is a great person to have in the family, um, maybe save some budget there or DJ or whatever. They're usually there. They want to get some pictures of getting ready. That's mm -hmm. usually, especially if it's a professional, they're going to be there getting some hair and makeup shots as you're in the chair. They're going to get some pictures of your dress on the hanger, right? Some well, the guy's getting ready. I was going to say a, a time saver for that though, is that they don't have to be there when you start hair and makeup. Oh, no, no. And so when we do our schedules for hair and makeup, usually the bride gets in the chair at the end or we kind of like faux <laughs> pretend yeah. like, you Set know, you're shot. putting in the rest of that. That way your photographer can get there at the last minute so they can stay as long as possible, especially right. if you only got them for like eight hours or whatever it is. Um, and then the shots like having mom help you put the dress on, those types of things, again, we can kind of, do a second <laughs> yeah. version of that to get the pictures. But there's some great videos I've seen where they, you know, the, the bridesmaids get a reveal. Mm. Dad gets a first look. Uh, the groom maybe gets, you're going to have maybe a first look with your, with your fiance. Um, it's all those really cool things that happen that if you're DIYing it, that may not even, you may not even think to have your, right. somebody there capturing those moments. And if you're already DIYing it, give your phone to somebody, right? Yes. Let somebody be somebody that designated picture. Cause I have my phone, takes fantastic pictures. I mean, not to say they're professional, but um, it just really shows up nice. So usually the cameras now on the phone, somebody, if, if you didn't hire or your, your photographer's not there yet, have your cousin, your friend, your maid of honor. Take some pictures. Take some pictures yeah. while you're doing that stuff because those are great keepsakes. Absolutely. So we checked off a few things um, as far as who arrives for the day. Um, hello. You the, didn't DJ, the DJ, yes, arrives. entertainment Thank band, you. whoever that may be. And again, these are all listed out on a timeline. The next thing we're going to think about is who is setting up and what timing happens for setup. Like there's items to be put out everywhere, right? Sign in table, your cake table, maybe you're doing a dessert display. Maybe you've got, you know, an elaborate backdrop for your sweetheart table. All those things need to happen before the ceremony starts. Okay. So keep that in mind. And your planner oftentimes has 17 bins and they're looking for Where's the cake topper? Like it's in yes. one of these bins, in one of these boxes. Uh, so you just need to have time to be able to go through all that stuff and not be going like, oh, crap, 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 like yeah. running, kicking things over because then then everything is out and scattered and you need to have time to make it show ready, meaning put all that stuff under tables, 
put the lids back on, get it out of there, get it out of the room, right? Yes. Set up. And it could be a monumental mess. It just stuff gets everywhere. It does. And to his point, um, bins or boxes are extremely helpful for you as a bride, bride's family. Labeled. In the Labeled days, boxes and bins. In the days <laughs> leading up to the wedding. So if you can take one bin and label it sign-in table and put the items that are going to go on the sign-in table in that bin, the photos, the sign-in book, um, your card box, then take a box and label it cake table and put your cake serving set in there. You know, any of those items to keep yourself sane and then to help <laughs> yeah. whoever you're passing that on to, right? Oh, so absolutely. that's a huge help. Think of the stuff you put your Christmas stuff in. Those are great sized bins. They're mm -hmm. clear. Sometimes you can see into them, right? Uh, those are really helpful. They are, especially for the DIY kind of thing. Get yourself a good set of Sharpies so you can write. write <laughs> yeah, things, Sharpie right? it up. Um, so after we've planned that out and we've done all that setup, um, you know, some of the things we kind of mentioned before, but that come into play here, when it gets to about two hours before ceremony start time, things start to get real, right? We're, we're, most vendors are, you know, on site, we're moving and grooving. We're starting to get into those scheduled pictures. And what I mean by that is, Bride getting in her dress, groom and groomsmen getting ready, pinning on boutonnieres, corsages. So I'm usually running around making sure people are where they need to be and that the vendors are aware of what's happening, right? And that it's all happening in a timely manner, okay? So that's super important. Now, the other thing that a lot of people, and this is just like a little quick tip, if you plan to do a first look, okay, you have to plan that with enough time to and to be in an area where guests don't see you. OK, so you have to think through your venue. Where is a good spot for you and your fiance to do that first look so that guests aren't walking up to the ceremony and see you in your dress? Right. You don't want that to happen. So you've got to kind of plan that out, too. And your photographers, if you have a professional, they'll be scoping the site. They may have Absolutely. shot there before and they may already have a spot in mind, but they're going to try to find a spot. But if there isn't a spot that's out of the way, you're right. And people will start to show up an hour before the ceremony. Yeah. Not, I mean, that's not, not too early, many, but, but you have people start wandering in. I'm like, are those guests already? I mean, oh my gosh. It can happen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, but definitely within a half hour before the ceremony, mm -hmm. here they come. Boy, that's when. So you're right. You got to get those shots. And get tucked away. Rushed and then get back behind behind the scenes. Because if there is no area other than just in the the high traffic area where everyone's going to see you, mm -hmm. you're right. You got to get that done and get it out of the way. So that's something that sometimes people don't think about. And again, a professional photographer really help you guide you on that and what will work lighting wise and all those good things. But it's just something you may want to think about beforehand. Okay. We're going to do our first look here and we're going to do it an hour prior to ceremony start time so that we have plenty of time to go in and do touch-ups to get everybody lined up. So as we go in and talk about ceremony and getting people lined up for the ceremony, um, I tell people at rehearsal, so I love to introduce myself at the rehearsal so that people know who I am um, and that they can identify me on wedding day, myself and my assistant, so that if they need anything, they can ask me first because I really don't want them going to the bride if possible because you will get inundated with questions and you'll feel obligated a lot of times to go out of the bridal suite and go look for it yourself and just don't want that, right? You want to stay put. You want to be in your happy place. Um, have your music blasting with your girls. Absolutely. And just that. be having a good time. Getting your hair did. <laughs> <laughs> so I will warn them that, you know, 20 minutes prior to ceremony start time, this is where we're gathering bridal party. Okay. Parents, <clears throat> grandparents, anybody who's in the procession. This is where I want you to be. Like ready to go. Boutonnieres on. Mm -hmm. Dressed. Any potty breaks are done, right? Right. That wedding dress. And potty breaks, that is not, that does not happen quick. Nothing, it nothing happens quick in that dress. I'm assuming I've never worn a dress, but I'm just saying right. the bride will disappear sometimes. I'll be like, where is she? Like, oh, she had to go to the bathroom. I'm like, oh my gosh, it was like a, yeah, it takes a like minute. A four person team. <laughs> An entourage, <laughs> a potty, yeah, potty a, entourage. I mean, you guys travel to the bathroom in packs anyway, so it's, it's, it works. it's not that far off the beaten path, I don't think. Absolutely. So, and the other thing about that too, as you talk about like things that take time, um, it's just a lot. If you've got a large bridal party, especially, I mean, people are talking and joking and, oh, I forgot my, you know, okay. whatever yeah. in the other room. And they, to get everybody there lined up instructions, give yourself enough time. This is what I'm telling you. If you have a cousin or a friend or mom and you're listening to this and you're DIYing the planning, just Take more time. Notes. 
Pause yeah. it, write it down. <laughs> <laughs> More time is better to get everyone ready to go. And I always say, I don't think I've had very many ceremonies start late because I'm like a kind of a stickler for starting on time. Reason being, everything else gets pushed after you start oh, yeah. late, right? You start late, you just start. And what are we eating into? Dancing time. Yes. That's so your party. Sacrifice. Anything that goes long is just going to nibble away at your dancing time. And if the lights are coming up at 11, it, the, just, you know, it's not like you can extend it sometimes. And so yeah. it's like, yeah, and that makes me sad. It does. and <laughs> Unless you have four and a half hours of dancing and then it's not as urgent, but that's not the case. Sometimes there's an hour and 20 minutes and, and you're sitting there waiting to start five minutes late can turn into 20 minutes in the blink of an eye. So here's something else I look out for and that becomes kind of a little point of contention. Here come guests. It's three o'clock. We're supposed to start, right? And there's a car pulls up. What do you do, right? Do you start or do you allow those guests to get out? I'm going to say, I'm going to look at the ceremony site. I'm going to see how full is it, right? Are these mm -hmm. just a few last stragglers, right? Or am I missing half my guest count? That is a different scenario, okay? Yeah. So that's the deciding factor there, whether we wait five minutes or more. Yeah, and so once you're, yeah, let's get there like we're like, here we are. You're lining people up. Mm -hmm. I'm in there usually because I'll start music usually like 20, 30 minutes before we start just to have like, it's kind of a nice ambiance to set the music, right? Some nice music playing. It kind of pulls the people in the right direction. One thing I look at is one, I'm looking for my officiant because I have to put mm -hmm. a mic on this person very often and I'm going to coordinate with them. And this is something where this is kind of DJ stuff, kind of planning stuff, but it's something the planner may do, but I need to know, like, are you making the announcement about cell phones or would you like me to, to turn them off? Um, you know what they did uh, two weeks ago, I think we had a social media minute where oh, yeah, this I've is seen a pretty those. cool thing. This is a cool thing you can put on your thing. The bride and groom got up there. The officiant said, all right, get your phones out. He had him turn around, look at the crowd. He stepped out of the shot. Everybody got some pictures. Video. Everybody got their cameras Oh, yeah. Off. It's Everybody great. Everybody got a good picture. They smiled. And then we're like, okay, now put them away. Let's do the ceremony. It was really a it's cool a thing to get it. Because otherwise you get, the photographer gets, somebody's going to lean into the aisle. And there was a perfect shot. And now there's somebody in the picture. But I'm going to well, check with them and say, what's, do you want me to do these announcements? And they go, no, it's in my notes. Perfect. If it's somebody that was ordained for the day, I'm going to tell them, do you have in big and bold and highlighted, please be seated in your notes because that's the most commonly overlooked thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody stands up when the bride comes in. The person up there, your brother-in-law gets nervous. He goes right into his notes. He doesn't even see that people are standing up. The photographer can't get a shot and everybody else is like, should we sit? And they're up and they're down. And one person sits mm -hmm. and then stands back up. And we're, it's the, really uncomfortable. the rest of us are around making these motions like, yeah, I'm in the back. Down. Like, We're trying to wave the officiant. Tell the guests. And sometimes they look at me and nod and I go, no, you did. Okay. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. A, it's important um, because I've had people sit or excuse me, stand for longer than you think, like longer than they want oh, the to whole for sure. Yeah. Because they're the so uncomfortable. Because mm -hmm. everyone else is not sat down. But anyway, so just what I'm talking to the fishing about is I'm saying, what's the last thing you're going to say? Because some people say you may now kiss and then that they're not saying anything else. And I'm like, but usually they kiss, then they turn and face their crowd. The bride will get her bouquet back from her maid of honor. He'll, he or she will say, ladies and gentlemen, presenting for the first time. And once he pronounces them, that's when I hit the music. But I've had people that I didn't check with for some reason, or they said they were going to do that. And again, they get nervous. And they forget. And they just look at me and I'm like, no, are we done? <laughs> I okay, guess I'm done. starting the music because we're not going to sit here being awkward. And then of course, are they going to make an announcement afterwards about, and here's the announcement. Immediate family, please stay here. Everyone else enjoy cocktails, something like that. Exactly. Is he going to make that announcement or she, or am I going to make that announcement? Because oftentimes your DJ can, especially if it's somebody who's nervous, like what else do I have to say? Like, okay, I can take some of this off your plate right. and make these announcements so you can just focus on the, the vows and the ring exchange. Um, but that's something, that's a conversation that usually has to take place. It is. And to that point, a lot that happens from this point on. So now we've gotten through the ceremony, right? Where we've told everybody they can go to cocktail hour. We've kept the immediate family and bridal party in one place. Um, it's very important from this point on that we're organized in just that, our announcements. How are we moving people from, say, cocktail hour to dinner through dances, right? Like we need to give people direction. And so if you, again, I'm going to reference, if you're DIYing the wedding planning portion, um, just be aware that if you've got 200 guests, it's not easy to get that amount of people from one place to another quickly. And if your next thing is introductions, like, cause usually cocktail hour is everybody gets a drink. 
the wedding party, the immediate family, and the couple, of course, are doing pictures. And they'll slowly start to whittle away. Mm-hmm. Family, you're done. You can go. And then bridesmaids, you're done. You can go. Groomsmen, right. you're done. You can go. And then the last two are just the couple and the photographer mm-hmm. doing a few shots, just just the two of them. Um, but if you are ready, like, hey, we're ready to do introductions. Well, everyone is still outside a cocktail hour. You have 200 people that need to go in, find their seat on the seating chart, and then settle in. That's 20 minutes. Oh, Easily Easy. 20 minutes. So you need to back that up. Wherever your introductions are, hurting of the crowd is a thing you need to account for that. And you need to be backwards planning that like, okay, it's going to take us 20 minutes to get everybody inside. Exactly. And that's what the professionals doing it. And we know how to move a crowd as opposed right. to, you know, just Aunt Betty trying to do it. Yes. But before we move on real quick. So here's one time, if you ever, like the getting started, like I said, if five minutes late starts into 20 minutes late, you're right. If you have like a pretty empty chapel, or the ceremony site, there's a lot of empty seats and there's nobody driving in, there's nobody walking up and mm-hmm. you're lined up ready to go. One thing that happens, where do people sit instinctively when they walk into a chapel? Oh, right. So they try to sit towards the back they because do. they're really nervous about taking the spot of maybe the immediate family or people that are in the procession. So, yeah. So what I do is I go check with the planner. Hey, how many rows do we have reserved? Because sometimes mm-hmm. parents, grandparents, sometimes the wedding party is going to sit. They're not going to stand up there. Not too often, but that comes up, right? They don't, only the bride and groom are going to stand up there. Only the couple are going to stand up there. But either way, they say, oh, just the front row. There are three rows on both sides that are completely empty. And what is that going to look like in pictures and video? Right. So one thing I do, you could tell this to your ushers, um, but your photographers out there are probably nodding. Like, get those seats filled up mm-hmm. front and let the ones in the back. Plus, when the couple walks in, I don't want the bride, the doors to open up and she's like, oh my God, what are all these empty seats? Right. right. I, don't, I don't want that to be the first thing Absolutely that pops in Absolutely not. Head. So get people against the aisle and filled up front. So just so the pictures look more like people are there and you don't have these empty seats, empty rows of things. And like I said, your ushers can do that for sure. Yeah. And that's something to, uh, it's a good point too. I actually really am very specific about how many people I can fit in a row and figuring out exactly the amount of people I can reserve space for. I'm not just going to say, let's reserve three rows on each side just to be safe. No, I want to make sure that we get those spots filled as much as possible so that, again, it looks nice in pictures and it looks full. Yeah. Um, it, it's important. So as we move on to the reception um, and we're moving people in, another thing for introductions is if you release the wedding party to cocktail hour before they get introduced, that can be an undertaking to try to get them back with you to do the formal introductions. Okay, so make sure you let them know like, hey, you can go grab a drink, but I need you back here and, you know, give them an earlier time, like five minutes before introductions. I need you back here at 555 or whatever um, so that you can, again, just kind of like before the ceremony, gather everybody, get them lined up in the right order. That takes time. Is that why you love working with me? I do, because this man helps me on that level and not all vendors are created equal and not to say they're not good at their job. It's just that some go above and beyond to assist their buddies during the wedding day, right? Well, for me, it's always like, what's next and who's involved? Right? Yes. Because going down the aisle, everybody that is going down the aisle, right? You've got to get grandma who went and sat down. Like the groomsman is changing a diaper, you know, or whatever. And you're like, get them all there. And uh, and to that point, I know we're trying to get away from the ceremony, but at some point, that person, if you're DIY, whoever your planner is, needs to, because this is what happens. Everybody's in the entryway, like, oh my God, I haven't seen you in so long. There's these hugs. Before the, the ceremony. Is this you're Billy? Saying. Oh my God, look how big but you're, you're, you're saying yeah, before, before the, the ceremony. ceremony. Yeah. Everybody's there, and all of these reunions are taking place. Someone has to say, if you're going down the aisle, come over here. If you're not, go and sit. Yes. Because that is where you will lose those 20 minutes in the blink of an eye, and suddenly you're way behind. So, um, but the same thing during cocktail hour, I'm finding my wedding party. I like to call them my wedding They're party. yours. There are wedding parties. There are. And I'm saying, let me go over the pronunciations because some people's names are tricky. And even if it's, do you prefer Andrea or Andrea? Do you prefer Anna or Anna? Like even the simple mm-hmm. names like that, let alone I had a a, a Greek family going into a, an Asian family. And oh my gosh, did I have some pronunciation? I had everything written out phon- phonetically. And people yes. were like, that's not how you spell it. I go, anybody checking my spelling? I got to say this right, but yes. I want to meet them. And I do. I tell them if you have an art, I'd rather somebody hear something twice than not at all. I'm going to say, hey, go grab a drink. But in about 20 minutes, we're going to be looking for you. So don't disappear. Mm-hmm. You know, keep your tie on. Don't put your tie around your head. Don't go get all in your khaki shorts because this weird things happen at weddings. People think that, oh, the ceremony's done. I can just detach. Nope. 
if you're in the wedding party, your job is not yes. done. Um, so yeah, that, it's really important again. And I usually tell the wedding party, like, I really just need you for this last thing. Because mm -hmm. honestly, once they do introductions, they can kind of relax a little bit, yes. right? I mean, they do, some mm -hmm. of them have toasts. They will help with other events during the night. But really after the intros, we don't need them to be at a certain spot usually um, yeah. until after that. But for the introductions, that's who... That's who I need to talk to. I need to talk to the wedding party because the couple aren't going anywhere. Where the couple will always, they know, they've been involved in all the planning meetings. They know more. They still want to, you know, be in the moment, but at the same time, they're not going to just wander off, right, and disappear on us. But the wedding party does, especially they if do. you have, man, we have had some big wedding parties. We have, and are we introducing the parents? Are we introducing the flower kids and the ring bearers, whatever? Right, those well, may be involved too. Yeah. So as we go into dinner, so now everybody's been introduced, and let's say we're going into dinner, and a big piece of dinner is moving through it efficiently, right? And another reason I love working with my husband is because we work really well to control the flow of releasing tables, okay? So if you don't have a professional planner to help with releasing tables to the buffet, you've really got to get someone who's going to like at least help let people know when it's their turn to go and try to be easy on the kitchen, okay? Because they can get overwhelmed really quickly, uh, depending on, you know, who you've hired, obviously. But the way we do it is, you know, Dominic will be up there and usually they've done their introductions. It's this big, crazy moment, right? And he'll let people know that dinner's coming. I will walk out onto the dance floor. And I say, mm -hmm. well, ladies and gentlemen, please be patient. We're going to get everybody through the buffet as quickly as possible. Usually I say, the bride and groom are going to eat first because they seem to think it's all about them today. And everybody's <laughs> like, ha, ha, ha. And I go, but this is Serena. And I say, raise your hand, Serena. She waves, hey, she will be releasing tables. And the reason I'm like really trying to hit this home is because there's always at least one table where they think, oh, he didn't mean me, right? I it can go eat whenever I want. My pet peeve. That the people it's think it, it is a thing. It's, it yeah. gets, the it's reason is, is it's this weird, if you're out there and you're a guest at a wedding, just think about this before you think, you can stand up and go eat before everybody else, before the parents, before the bridal. I mean, who paid just, for it most likely? Yes, just because yeah. you, you're hungry. Everybody in the room is hungry, right? Like everybody wants to eat. But if we've directed you, I mean, please just be patient. It's just this thing. I mean, it's my <laughs> one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's my sore spot, right? <laughs> um, but but again, it's also really helpful for having a effective, very efficient dinner. Yeah, right. And the people that should the, the people of honor that night the couple the wedding party the parents they should go first because you know it's their they're the immediate family the only reason y'all are there is because they're these two are getting yeah, married and and they sometimes the couple paid for it so it's like yeah i mean let, let be patient absolutely cousins at table 12 be patient <laughs> you know what i do is if they go through the buffet and they get a plate of food and i haven't released because sometimes i release tables too what I'll do is like, as I see him in the dance floor, I'll like slap the food out of their hands Ooh. and it slams on the floor. And I say, you will eat when I say. Do no, you now? I would never do that. I've never seen you do in that. In my head. Okay. So like this <laughs> That's scenario has played out in my head. I literally have stood at the back of the buffet line and I yeah. know when you've been released or not, right? Because I'm doing it. And here comes this table or a couple from one of the tables walking up to me and they just look at me and turn around <laughs> and go <laughs> back to their seat because they're like, oh. She didn't tell us. I bet if we did slap the food out of their hands, that'd be the last table at that night. That probably, probably, yeah, that's not a good idea. But so, who's, who's cleaning up that mess? That's the question. Yeah, probably us. Um, now we've gone into like everybody's eaten, right? Okay, and we're going to talk about what are you doing to prepare people for the events, such as dances and toasts. What's yeah. important about this? So that. Sometimes people think, oh, the DJ just pops it in neutral. I mean, that is, and then, or the planner, but sometimes the planner's releasing tables. So the next people that are going to be involved, if we haven't already done the dances initially, because um, some people do introductions right into first dances. And in that case, I'm going to be talking to the people involved, right? And even if we, there's oftentimes is a blessing. I got to find Uncle Joe during cocktail hour and let him know, hey, do you know you're doing the blessing? Because mm -hmm. how many times have they said, what am I doing? Like, right. Oh. So the couple have chosen you to do the blessing. But they forgot to tell you. Nobody told Uncle Joe he was going to do a blessing. <laughs> so if he does, he needs to get his thoughts together. You don't want to just call that person up and hand him a microphone and be like, what am I doing? Because those people are not comfortable in that environment, even if they do know. But if they don't know, you're just, it's going to be a train wreck. So, but let's just assume we haven't done the dances yet. And uh, so during dinner, I am talking to 
the father of the bride, if he's having a dance with his daughter, I'm talking to the mother of the groom, because those are the usual suspects that are involved in those dances. And I'm going to tell them, you know what I say? Uh, do you know what I say when I walk up to him? I don't think I do. I go After up to the all father of the bride years. and I say, so I'm going to need you for a dance in a few minutes here. And he looks at me and I go, not with me. That'd be weird. Oh, yeah. And then I say, who would lead? And then he looks at me like, what? And he's, I'm trying to get people to laugh and lighten up a little bit. You? No? no. Yeah, for sure. And I say, I'd let you lead. It's a big day. And he goes, no, no, you can lead. I go, no, no. Oh, that's, that's nice. Then. It's, it's very funny, depending on the personality. But um, my goal is to get to know people, lighten them up, get them chuckling a little bit. Anyway, so then, um, but the other thing that we're usually doing oftentimes right at the end of dinner is blessing, excuse me, not the blessing, the toast. So usually best man, maid of honor, maybe the father of the bride is doing a, a, a toast as well. So I'm going to talk to him about his dance and his toast. But either way, we're going to say where it's happening. I go over some quick mic etiquette. Mm -hmm. Don't hold the mic at your hip. You can't point with it like, yeah, me and uncle. I'm like, you can't do that. Because what happens is they hold it at their hip and people say, and I, the DJ has turned it up to try to make it work from where he's holding it. He or she's holding it. And they say, we can't hear you. And then they put it right in their mouth and go, is this better? And you're like, oh, and everybody's ears. Blast like, their eardrums. Oh my gosh. So yeah. that happens all the time. Yeah, that's tough. So basically to wrap that up, it's um, it's important to let anybody who's doing something, especially on the microphone, like saying something to give them a heads up. The other thing that happens and what I do a lot of the time is let them know so that they can go to the bathroom so that they can change their shoes or whatever they're doing oh, no, it's not or that. wanted it's... to do before they did that activity. What is that? But I always say, do you have notes or are you winging it? And they say, yeah. oh, I'm going to speak from the heart. I go, okay, well, put something at the end that says, so let's all raise our glasses yes, to the new please. Something, because otherwise they'll just go and go and go. And they don't have, I don't like when they wing it sometimes. because like, It's true. And because then you've all. Spring break, we're like, no, 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 no. Yeah, then, don't go down that path. <laughs> We've all been to those weddings where, you know, whoever gets on the mic and they mean well, right? They, they want to tell these stories. They want to be funny, but they don't realize how long they're talking for and they don't have a way to end it. So they just keep going. So it is, it's good to give them a little tip of how are you going to end it? Just hold the glass up, say cheers to the lovely couple, you and know, the person, give them that oh, tool. Yeah. If the person that leads off goes 10 or 15 minutes, the other people feel obligated, like, oh, maybe I should. Like, no, don't. You want to. Yeah. Um, so that is <clears throat> a huge portion of our job. And I know we've talked kind of all over the place in this episode about all sorts of random things, but these are just some pieces of what we do that might be helpful to you if you don't have someone in our roles that's a professional, right? That you're just kind of giving the reins over to Aunt Betty or cousin Susie or whatever. Yeah. And real quick before we, are you trying to tie it up? Is that I am. Yeah, Cause I we're, yeah. That. But there's a couple of little things that like, when I say like, where are we doing the toast? Like I want, I'll check with the photographer first. Cause they may have, they want the backdrop. The, yes. They want a pretty picture, right? They don't want the, the exit sign or the fire extinguisher. Maybe we'll scoot over here. Maybe the cake table looks pretty. We're going to do it there. But oftentimes this is something that happens all the time. Y'all bought some really pretty fancy flutes for the champagne toast mm. and they didn't get put out or they're sitting on the cake table. And you did toast with a Dixie cup. And I'm like, no, they had the I fancy know. flutes, put some champ. or is there champagne? Is it a drink in hand toast? Like what do they have? Or is there champagne at the bar? Because there have been times we are ready to do the toast. I'm ready to turn on the mic and I happen to walk by the bar and I see 15 bottles of champagne. I'm like, and that oh, takes time. Was that supposed to be for everybody? Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, wait. I tell the bartender, pop those corks, man. Cause I'm going to set them up because we're now we're going to lose another 15 minutes. Yes. Pouring champagne. So you got to get ahead of that stuff, but also bust the table. If we're doing it at the sweetheart table and you've got half a chicken leg, you know, and some empty glasses and forks and napkins, yes. like, those are going to be in the picture. So you want to bust that stuff too. So little things like that, just look at where the thing is happening and little things like that will just really, because you don't want to look at the pictures later and be like, it's a beautiful picture, but gross. All the dirty <laughs> plates half, are right there. Yeah, that's the eaten, thing. It's yeah, a thing. Whatever. So these are things that your vendors hopefully are looking for, um, but something if you're doing it yourself too, just kind of look at what where it's going to be photographed and does it look nice move if the trash can's on wheels roll that thing out of the picture <laughs> if I you mean, can, that, absolutely. yes because that happens you're like why, oh, why is that in the picture it is it's important but the biggest thing about this day and why people are there for you is to help you have the best day ever right and so if you keep your your eyes on the prize as i like to say and keep the couple's wishes in mind, right? Like you can have a successful event. Um, it, it's definitely possible even, you know, I, I, we're professionals and I can say even without professionals, like people have parties, they have weddings without us all the time. What? I know. Without and I, us? I know. And I'm just saying like- How could they possibly? 
it, it may be a better experience yeah, with professionals, knows? but you know, who knows? And so we just want to give you some tools, some advice from the experiences we've had to help you have a more successful yeah. wedding. So really to sum it up, I would say like, if you look at the whole day, you're going to be overwhelmed. Like, oh my God, but just like what's next and just mm -hmm. take those baby bites throughout the night. Like, okay, who's involved with this next wave of events? Cause there are, it's like the pre-ceremony and then you have the ceremony, get everybody involved in the ceremony. And then you have cocktail hour. You can kind of reset your clock set. Okay. Right. We're doing it. What's next. We're doing introductions, maybe first dances, get those people involved and yes. informed. And then you go have dinner. Okay. Catch your breath during dinner. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to go into toast or dances. Then maybe get those. And then you open the dance floor and then it's like, what bouquet garters maybe the right thing, right so. and your send, send off at the yeah. end but yeah if you can like not overwhelm yourself with the whole yes, picture and bites. look at things <laughs> in maybe 30 minute increments that's super helpful too so we'll sign it off today by saying what we always say it is a very personal day your wedding day just do you everybody's going to have advice but don't let anybody talk you into something you don't want to do or talk you out of something you have your heart set on it's your day, so do it your way. Don't let your crazy cousin say, oh my God, I would never. That's great. Thank you, cousin. I don't. That's <laughs> and we promise, <laughs> we promise to keep recording episodes, to keep on a better schedule. We're going to keep up with this stuff. Um, but happy wedding planning, y'all. We'll see you next time. Hey, so thanks for listening to our podcast. If you found any of this information helpful and you know someone who may be engaged or is a maid of honor, maybe you could tell them and share it with a friend. Absolutely. So screenshot this episode, share it on Instagram, on Facebook, and tag the wedding duo. We promise to share the love back. Also, if you are interested in more resources or the show notes, you can go to theweddingduo.co. We have one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions, a shop, all sorts of fun stuff. Check it out.